Good afternoon. Thank you for joining me again on Thursday night. I hope you're doing uh, very well wherever you are in the world. Welcome back to potentially the uh, the, penult the penultimate Thursday of the uh, um, Alfa Romeo Owners Club Bianca Motorsport Future Alfa Racing Championship. And tonight could potentially mark the night where we uh, crown the winners of a couple of the long-running series, Hartford series, um, with a couple of drivers running through. So tonight could be a very exciting night for crowning champions and uh, people that will hopefully be in a uh, on the grid in real life um, of the Alfa Romeo Championship Association um, race in the new year. So, that very serious intro out of the way. Qualifying has begun, but just to catch everyone up very quickly on what the scores on the doors are at the moment. So, for the TCR round that we have, as you can see, uh, the Colin Kniff is leading the championship with 193 points. It's a bit smaller on my screen than it is for you, I'm sure. Uh, so, yes, 193 points at the moment in the touring car class um, uh, with Matt 24 points behind him and then Andrew Whitehead 9 points behind uh, Matthew so for Colin to clinch the uh, the results for the touring car championship by the end of tonight's proceedings he will have to be 25 points clear of Matt um, and as we see nothing is that predictable um, and everything could change by the end of the evening so that's the touring totals and here we have the overall results uh, so far before tonight's proceedings for the uh the overall championship so as you can see the ones eligible for um so not only is there bragging rights for winning the entire championship but there's also a uh quite desirable prize really in uh, in in racing in real life um the two eligible for that one being colin Kniff and andrew whitehead um for that event but as you can see the standing so far for the entire championship uh matt daly currently leading with 359 points um and then two points trailing him is colin Kniff, and then 13 point the way i've done it probably not the right way to do it but anyway 13 points trailing colin is uh andrew whitehead well, I think that's uh, 344. So it's a bit smaller on my screen than it is <laughs> showing you guys. But there we are. But facing them tonight is a triple header event with two uh, two reverse grids. The second one being random um, of this evening, racing the Alfa Romeo Alfa Romeo Giulietta Touring Car, 340 brake horsepower in a uh, 1200 kilogram car going around a nearly five and a half kilogram cir kil kilometer circuit with 21 turns i think that that number of turns is going to be quite a deciding point because you've got you've got the extra amount of braking points um opportunities to to pass hopefully if uh you know if if all calamities are avoided going into turn one, of course. So, as I said, qualifying has begun for the gentlemen. We will jump across straight away. There is currently just over 16 minutes left and is still very hard for up to now. So let's just change a couple of those options. So, as you can see, Colin Kniff is currently has provisional pole position as uh we do seem to dive into the pits the slightly confusing thing is there are two uh pit straights for this circuit um so we may see them cross like pit lines and expect them to go into the pits it is but they won't actually be doing that it's just part of the racing circuit so as uh Colin Keefe currently in the pits making i think what changes that he can andrew whitehead currently on the front row 0.3 of a second i mean the, the top 
five drivers within a second of each other gives you a clear indication as to as to the amount of uh, skill involved from these uh, from these gentlemen some real racing drivers some sim racing drivers but uh, all within the same uh, roughly the same pace as each other making very very exciting racing throughout the, se the season I myself only joined as a commentator halfway through but uh, it's been incredible to watching from that point on what the guys the, the skills guys have the close racing that they've produced and it all leads down to the final few races next week of course being an endurance round um that uh I'm not too sure on the circuit of that one but in endurance round will actually be ne next week will actually be the final round of uh the overall championship But as we can see, and by the... <laughs> I told you it was close! By the absolute hair's breath! Andrew Whitehead has, uh, just for the moment, with 14 minutes to go, and as I... <laughs> watch the timing? <laughs> Everything is changing by the second. As you can see, the gap between Andrew Whitehead in on the first row and Colin Kniff now pushed down to the second row as uh, he believes on his outlap there. Um, 0 0.001 of a second between the two. So we shall see if Colin's uh, settings changes has done any improvements to his, his uh, pace. Matt Daly, of course, looking to hopefully tie up the championship if he can if he is able to do that. But let's have a little look at the rest of the field. So, for the moment with 13 minutes left on the clock, Matt Daly is currently on provisional pole position for the race with Andrew Whitehead joining him on the front row. Colin Kniff and Greg Young following along suit. Tim Perry coming down in fifth. So with that pace change, actually the top three really ramping it up. And now uh, there's Greg Young, who runs a little wide there by the looks of it. Um, currently outside of a second. And I think that will... Uh, Scrap the lap for himself as he may just be returning to yes, returning to the pits for setup changes. Pass that 21 corners on the circuit, so a lot of potential to to overrun things like that. Paul Blunt just returning out of the pits for his um, for another go at the time. Andrew Whitehead in the pits as well. Alan Matthews, 1.3 seconds behind pole position. It never sounds like too much, but in most racing, over a second is a, is a complete age. Uh, Rob Whitney there in ninth. Guys, we'll break down in tenth. Stephen Knight in eleventh. Matt Daly ever increasing his pace and going faster. At the front there, so has been, by the looks of it, really putting in the practice, getting his line dialed to do the best that he can in tonight's proceedings. From the start, finish position is a long straight away until practically 90 degree left of turn one, and then a couple of sweeping turns into two and three and four, and then another heavy braking zone in turn five. So. Once they're all through turn one, it could uh, people could be evening out, but uh, turn one breaking zone could be quite tricky for a few of them. Uh, looks like Matt Daly again setting a personal best for the first sector. Andrew Whitehead is now back out on track. Um, so I believe this may be his outlap. Colin Kniff currently doing, I think, better than before, but he's still a little bit down on time from uh, Matt Daily. So 
so it has a little bit of work to do to catch up. Looks like this middle sector is struggling slightly, but uh, we shall see if that has any effect on the overall race. just ticking down past 10 minutes Tim Perry now breaking that uh, doing a fantastic time breaking back into the uh, one second club if you will behind uh, first place bringing himself all the way up to fourth pushing Greg Young down into fifth uh, but who will be on the Beginning of the third row now, by the looks of it. Matt Daly again going quicker, by the looks of it. Ever increasing the gap from Andrew Whitehead and Colin Keneve. So it looks like they have a fair amount of work actually to do to climb up the order. So the start and the getaway as we actually have Matt Daly coming up behind Andrew Whitehead on the track. Andrew Whitehead though looks to be going quicker. As I believe, whereabouts will he be on the circuit? I believe he comes down the long straightway down to turn eight. Badelli right behind him as you can hear him clacking down the gears trying to get the car slowed for the uh, little chicane switchback again down another long straightaway so this is the full straightaway if you will <laughs> or oh, the second start finish straight on the circuit another heavy braking zone into turn 11 another sort of double chicane through 12 and 13 And then you get kind of a little Tetris pattern after that of uh, turns from 14 to 21. So Andrew Whitehead looks to be a little bit slower through the mid section on that uh, on that run. But I'm sure pushing as much as his cars will allow Colin Keneath back in the pits to make changes as we see Tim Perry's phase through the car there. A quirk of uh, sim racing. Hello, Matthews, I think, doing best. Uh, his time is up on his previous best. Andrew Whitehead now coming along the start finish straight, not able to improve on his time as of yet. Matt Daly back into the pits. And then Matthews currently in fifth. Trundling around, so they'll obviously them being racing drivers, they'll still be very, very competitive through the field. So it'll be interesting to see how much people are pushing, whether there are any incidents with Uh, lapped cars as we see actually Matt Daly right behind Paul Plant at the moment so that uh, potentially would have uh, ruined any flying lap from Matt Daly but I think he might have been on his out lap I think which is why he's right behind Paul Plant as it is <clears throat> everyone looks to be out the pits uh, who I think that'd be that's Aaron Smith I believe Alex Smith. Uh, looks like to Alex Smith. There we are. Uh, looks like to be slightly late joining to the server, but is still in ready to participate in the race. 
just setting a uh, an out lap, out lap time and then we'll uh, be on to his flying lap now. Stephen Knight just coming across the start finish line to begin another lap. Tony Matt Daly out on track with just over five minutes remaining, hoping he's done enough to secure pole position. But as we know, it is never that simple. And uh, last lap dashes have happened. Um, as we see Andrew putting in a good first sector. But then looks to be struggling with something in the middle of the lap. <clears throat> as we see him return to the pits to make a setup change. Well, can keep going around him to begin another lap, hoping to at least improve on his... With a .001 second gap to jump up to the front row. As it, I believe it is Collins to lose. As we see Colin go around the hairpin bend all the way at the further reaches of the circuit at turn seven. And Perry behind him, Stephen Knight is currently stationary on track, just returning to uh, the pit garages. And Daly still behind Paul Plant. Andrew Whitehead's now back out on track to try and improve his time. Colin Kniff putting in a good first sector. So it looks like they're all very close to Matt's pace, I think, in the first sector. But something in the middle sector has got them slightly offline or slightly losing time over Matt's pace at the moment let's see with uh, just over two and a half minutes where the, there we are see sector two quite a bit slower than whatever Matt Daly appears to be doing but will it be enough to get up to the front row Paul Plant just retiring back to the pits as well, I see. Like Smith has put in a time, slightly off the pace of everyone else, but he's uh, managed to jump himself in front of uh, Stephen Knight. As Conley Thief comes across the line, he's not able to improve upon his time. But Tim Perry put in a fantastic time, jumps, leapfrogs the both of them. So uh, Tim Perry just uh, floating around sort of fourth, fifth position, putting in a fantastic time, is now on the front row of the grid. As you see, last minute, that just happened, everyone. You just, uh, Tim Perry just tied it all together and managed to get uh, a fantastic commanding position for the upcoming race. The second race, of course, will be a random... Uh, Baker Biden will be a reverse grid, but with a random position selected um, as to how far down the uh, grid is uh, swapped. So, one minutes remaining so greg young will not get out on track for another crack at the uh, leaderboard colin kniff again has put in a good first sector personal best first sector so has andrew whitehead so is tim barry actually by the by the uh by the looks of it as well don't believe paul plant will have done enough 
but we currently have good times coming in from third to fourth so let's see if this changes the order in the last lap of the uh, qualifying Colin Keneef slightly slower again from his best time Tim Perry again putting in personal best so is Andrew Whitehead Five seconds on the clock, so uh, anyone on their lap, does it... Uh, Paul Plant just by the skin of his teeth getting another lap in. That was very, very close by the looks of it as to... Uh, as to whether he got across the start-finish line in, in time. Personal best as well by Matt Daly. Hoping to try and defend his position... Tim Perry has, has pulled out of that lap. Guys, we're well, disconnecting there. Tim Perry has pulled out of that lap, so he will not improve upon his time. Andrew Whitehead comes across the line, but stays where he is on the second row. So, so is Colin Keneef, who has uh, just pulled out. So it looked like some good times coming in from the rest of them, but they have all slowed up. And that gives you your two front row running order. Matt Daly... And Tim Perry in the front row, and then Andrew Whitehead and Colin Keneath on the second row. Uh, I have a magic button here somewhere to press. Let's me think. There we are. The camera obviously fell asleep as well. How dare you? Um, so we need to back out of that uh, uh, server was the word I was looking for. And then they can get it ready for the race with the we'll find results set in but yes as we see very very much down to the wire and um tim perry putting in a fantastic lap to bring himself up to the front row of the grid how will that affect the start who knows it's going to put pressure on colin keneef and certainly andrew whitehead as well as to what they can do to get uh, get themselves as far up as they can into fighting positions. Um, and yes, it's a, a down to luck for the second race as to what, uh, what position they land in. So while we wait for the server to be reset, we will be back in a moment.
So we are just counting down the final few minutes till the beginning of the race. Uh, so let's see if we just go through for. Uh, there are just to clarify on the front row for the first of three races tonight as the Azamarina Marina Circuit. We have Matt Daly uh, and Tim Perry. Andrew Whitehead heads up the second row with Colin Keneef uh, next to him. Third row is Paul Plant and Greg Young. Fourth row is Alan Matthews and James Rose. The fifth row is Rob Whitney and Guy Swarbrick. And the last run of the grid is Alex Smith and Stephen Knight. So now will just be the moment for the drivers to try and calm themselves before uh, the first of tonight's three events. So they said long straight from their uh, current positions down to the 90 degree left hander, sort of sweeping left hander if you will to the first corner. We shall see if uh, Andrew Whitehead can get the or Colin can even get a good start to chase down the two in front of them. Tim Perry a little bit of a wild card uh, at the moment as potentially has a shot with tying up the uh, championship results but uh, has a fair bit of work to do to get there currently Tim currently being fourth in the overall championship uh, with 254 points Uh, but Tim being one of the uh, pro drivers uh, is not eligible to compete in the or, or, or win the uh, the race seat, if you will, for the Alfa Romeo Championship Association event. So that uh, that particular prize is down to Colin and Andrew to sort themselves out. Just under a minute left until the beginning of the race like a Greg I think just testing his lights it's all good hoping to get uh, people out the way as possible for him <clears throat> I'm sure the nerves are setting in for everyone just a 15 minute race plus a lap from the leader final few moments until the race begins Six red lights on the gantry. Three lights, four, five, six lights. The engine notes rise. They get ready for the start. They are away. Looks like a good start by all. Andrew White has already trying to hand down the leaders. Looks like he will get fairly far up the position. There's slight contact between the two. Matt Daly's run wide. Everyone looks to be getting through fairly well. No massive contract. Uh, Andrew, how, who's that? Tim Perry's managed to get past Matt Daly through the first couple of chicanes. Andrew Whitehead. Everyone's running a little bit wide, but they have all made it very well through. Matt Daly is again fighting back for the lead. Does so very, very well. Paul Plant is fighting Colin Keneef. Colin Keneef again on the outside of the chicane. Very, very wide. Paul Plant able to get up inside the inside line, get past him already. Matt Daly is trying to break the toe from Tim Perry and Andrew Whitehead again, trying to get the run down to the next set of corners of turn eight. Again, another heavy braking zone, left hander into another chicane. Andrew Whitehead trying to get the run, trying to get the slip strings, not able to do it. Again, they're nearly three wide, moving back. Greg Young, Paul Plant, uh, Colin Cleef on the outside. Colin is 
think trying desperately not to get penalised, he ran very, was pushed wide, I think, a little bit. Couldn't get uh, the car slowed down in time, so that's pushed him far down the order. And again, he's lost out another position with cars all around him. James Rose, I think, trying to get round him. Alex Smith at the front of the row of the of the race. Matt Daly has managed to wrestle first position back off of him. James Rose has got round guys. Swarbrick at in eighth as they're going through turns nine and ten, I believe. Uh, no, this may be anyway up to uh, turn fourteen. Again, there's more changes in the middle. Alan Matthews got past Greg Young. Colin Conniff now all the way down into 10th after that disastrous turn 11 incident. But he's still pointing in the right direction. So going through the complex set of corners uh, through turns 21. Now, big pun, turn 20. Here's the 21. On to the start finish straight. To complete the first lap, first lap of the race done. And we have Matt Daly back in uh, first place. Tim Perry is in second. Andrew Whitehead very close behind him, trying to get the toe into the first corner. Putting an immense amount of pressure on his car. Colin Keneef again losing out of position to Rob Whitney. He's not entirely sure what happened there. Perhaps the car, Colin's car may have damage. Not too sure, but that's not where he wants to be on the circuit could play out very very well for that's a couple of uh, reverse grid races but not uh, not for this one tim perry just i think a little bump there from andrew whitehead andrew looking for any weakness in his driving that he can exploit paul plant is under pressure from alan matthews uh and greg young looks like trying to catch up and get in positions they're all still very bunched up so it's fantastic to see they've all managed to get through the first sub couple of corners again Colin Keneve going backwards he's uh falling far behind the remainder of the grid not entirely sure what's happened to to his race so far it's a great shame to see hopefully he can catch up to the rest and get back into fighting positions as they're going down the long straight we're down to turn 11 Andrew Whitehead taking a very shallow line through those corners trying to gain any position on the circuit he can Trying to get as close to Tim Perry as he can. Down into the heavy braking zone. Very close to the car in front. Manages to get it stopped in time. So going through the uh, following chicanes of uh, turns 12 and, 11, uh, and 13. Uh, there's been a little bit of shunting in the middle by the looks of it. Unless that was an isolated incident by Rob Whitney on his own. Uh, Guy Swarbrick is now up past Alex Smith. There was a battle. There is a battle in the for fourth place between Paul Plant, Alan Matthews, Greg Young. So Greg Young's managed to catch up and is uh, looking to pressurise the guys in front. Andrew Whitehead now 0.6 of a second roughly behind Tim Perry. Gap opening up from Matt Daly to Tim at the moment. I think Tim's a little bit preoccupied with trying to keep Andrew Whitehead behind him at this point. Personal bet slaps coming through. Greg Young looking to the inside, possibly, of uh, the cars in front of him. I think a little bit of a technical stutter, maybe, from Tim Perry. It'd be a great shame if he ends up having a disconnect issue. Uh, again, very, very close battle for fourth. Uh, Alex Smith is just taking an outside, trying to get an outside line on. Guys, Swarbrick. Uh, still side by side, very close racing between the two as they head through the sweeping turns of turn three. Uh, soon under the again heavy breaker zone, guys. Robert has the commanding line, and Alex Smith has to fall in behind him through the chicane, heading up to turn seven. Uh, Alex will be looking to try and get. Looks like Alex missed a gear and will be under pressure from Rob Whitney now. The car didn't really get away. There was a uh, bit of a rise. Andrew Whitehead is going up the inside of Tim Perry. Gets the car slowed down and braking, but he's on the offside for turn nine. And has to... F no, Andrew Whitehead has managed to get in front of him. Tim Perry's had to fall in behind. He's under pressure from Paul Plant now. 
Uh, Alex Smith looks like he's got past Rob Whitney again. Guys, Robert will be glad about that and getting away up the road. Tim Perry is now under pressure from several cars behind. Paul Plant is looking for any gap he can. Will he get up the inside up to, up to turn 14? Not quite. Looks like Tim running a little bit wide of, uh, of the curbing at that point in the circuit. But Paul Plant right under his rear wing. Looking for any opportunity can. Alan Matthews again. Cla and Greg Young both very, very close. This is now a battle for third place on the grid. So Tim Perry trying to keep Andrew Wade as bay as much as he can. Wasn't able to do it and has lost out and is now under pressure from two, three cars behind him. Everyone running very wide on the last corner. Trying to keep up as much speed as he can. Alan Matthews looking at an attack on Paul Plant. Not able to do it. Again running wide of the curbing. Uh, down the straightaway to turn two. Everyone at the moment single file heading through the long sweeping chicanes. Finding the braking zones. Paul Plant looks like he carried a lot of speed through that corner. Just about gets it done, but Alan Matthews looking at an inside turn. Can he get the undercut and get a good drive away from the hairpin? He's looking like he's trying his best, trying to get as much slipstream as possible. When will he make the dive for the inside line? Paul Plant trying to defend as much as he can. When will they begin to break for turn eight? Paul Plant again on the inside of the circuit. Looking to defend his position. Alan Matthews is up beside him, but is on the offside of circuit. But holds his line is contact between the two as Paul Plant looks. Uh, turns in as normal to turn nine. And ends up striking uh, Alan's car. They still side by side as they're going down the second long straightaway to turn 11. Paul Plant just sneaking ahead and Alan Matthews just falling in behind for now until he can amount another attack on his position. So it looks like Paul Plant was just not expecting him to be there. Turned in as normal. Unfortunately, they've, uh, they've both managed to get away with the contact made between the two and get a slight gap opening up between the two now. Colin Keneef now fighting his way up into eighth position past Guy Swarbrick. Very clean move by the looks of it made. And now improves on his position again. Five minutes of the race remaining as they come to complete uh, lap three and beginning of lap four. Again, more personal bests from the top drivers in the race currently matt daly in first position with andrew whitehead in second tim perry in third excuse me paul plant back and forth but still under a immense amount of pressure from alan matthews looks like he carried a lot of speed through turn three and four Paul Plant defending on the outside of the circuit both finding their breaking points turning into the chicane of turns five and six can Alan recreate that opportunity that he made the first time around? He's as close as he needs to be. Looking to Paul Blanc weaving around the circuit, trying to break the toe. Desperately trying to break the toe from Alan Matthews. Looks like he just about managed to succeed on that one. And unfortunately dropping back slightly, they both find their breaking points getting slowed down enough. So Paul Plant looks like he's getting wise to what Alan will be trying to attempt, so he's doing his best to get a to defend as much as possible. Very good job for Paul Plant on his defending.
lap four of the race. It looked like a big cut from Alan Matthews on that particular corner. I didn't quite get a uh, get to see the exact position of the wheels on that particular bend, but it looked a bit heavy from what he's, he's cooked a wheel up on the curbs. The car was beginning to, uh, rear wheels looked like they were beginning to overtake him a little bit, but he's managed to keep control of the car and uh, gain slightly on the time behind Paul Plant. Let me just have a quick look at the front of the grid as uh, Matt Daly comes to complete lap four. Andrew Whitehead nearly four and a half seconds behind him now. As long as Matt can keep his head down and keep a clean race. Looks like it will uh, it'll end up with a good position. Andrew Whitehead again doing a very tidy race. It is Tim Perry in third. Very happy, I'm sure, that... Uh, Fourth and fifth are squabbling amongst themselves. Um, leaving MB. Looks like there's a gap opened up between Paul Plant and Alan Matthews now. He's not quite as close as uh, as he needs to be. Slight lock up from the rear wheels now on Paul Plant's car. He's trying to get uh, the car slowed and into the bend as fast as possible. Greg Young hoping to catch up and Vi uh, put his uh, hat in the ring for fourth place. Alex Smith and Guy Swarbrick swap places going through the chicanes of five and six. Colin Keneath currently up into eighth position trying to chase down James Rose in front of him. Has a little bit of a way to go with just over two minutes of the race remaining. Rob Whitney, Guy Swarbrick and Alex Smith all fighting for ninth position. Stephen Light at the back there currently going through the chicanes and uh, going around turn seven. Fantastic effort from him. Oh dear, Guy Swarbrick's contact with Guy Swarbrick and Rob Whitney. We turned away there for a moment. It looks like Guy ran very, very wide of uh, the chicane at turn nine. Try to get back on the track to not incur any penalties for cutting, but unfortunately then made contact with Rob Whitney on his rejoin. And Rob quite likely would not have particularly have expected him to be there um, at, uh, at such a quick, sharp angle. <coughs> Excuse me. So with one minute remaining of the race, uh, so this will be the penultimate lap and then another lap to end the race from our leader. Matt Daly nearly five and a half seconds now ahead of Andrew Whitehead in second. Tim Perry still under pressure from Alan Matthews and Paul, from Paul Plant and Alan Matthews, sorry in that correct order. All fighting for third position now. But Tim Perry doing just enough to keep ahead of them as needed. Greg Young back in sixth. James Rose just ahead of Colin Khalifa, who has managed to close the gap very, very well. Done a fantastic job to get onto the back of James Rose's car and we'll look to make a maneuver as quickly and cleanly as possible. Can he do it coming out of the chicane of turn seven? He's going around the outside. Can he get the undercut and get a good drive away? He's on the power already. James Rose looks to be trying to defend his position. Colin Keneath has the slipstream. Looks to be close enough. James Rose is defending from where he is. Colin looks at going down the inside, but doesn't have the run as of yet, and dips back in. Dips back onto the racing line, but has a good drive coming out of turn 10. Down the second start finish straight of the circuit. They are side by side. James Rose now knows he's there, trying not to hit him on the braking zone into turn 11. Colin will be on the outside and decides it's better off just to again, dip behind James Rose. James Rose under an immense amount of pressure from the checkered 
car of uh, Colin Keneath. As they switch left and right through the complex amount of uh, corners on the final sector of the circuit. Matt Daly now on the seventh and final lap of the race. There has been a change for fourth place as uh, Alan Matthews has managed to get past Paul Plant. Fantastic job by uh, Alan there. Paul Plant running very, very wide. Not sure what's happened there. Carried way too much speed through uh, the turn three by the looks of it and just ran completely off the circuit and a massive amount of damage has happened to the offside of his car where he hit the barrier. Not a good result for him. He's lost out as well to uh, Greg Young. Colin Kniff still behind James Rose as they head into the uh, chicane as well. But a very peculiar incident from uh, Paul Plant there. However, Matt Daly has not had anywhere near such an incident. It's doing very, very well to stay at the sharp end of the field, 6.2 seconds ahead of Andrew Whitehead. Everyone's still roughly in the same positions. The battle's still continuing between James Rose and Colin Keneath. Very good job from James to defend his position. Colin looks like he may get a slightly better run again coming out of turn 10. He is up beside him on the circuit, but backs off. And uh, just dips behind James's car. Can he get him on the outside under braking? It's unlikely, but he's trying. Gets, tries to get the switch back on the chicane. Not able to do it and has to follow him through the next complex set of corners. Alex Smith, Rob Winnie, and Guy Swarbrick all on their own, as is Stephen Knight. As we see Matt Daly through the penultimate amount of corners. as Matt Daly wins the first race of the evening. Very, very good job to him. As we see Andrew Whitehead crossing the line in second place, Tim Perry takes third. Alan Matthews takes fourth. Greg Young in fifth. Paul Plant able to finish the race in sixth. Colin Keneath does indeed just get past James Rose on the line uh, for seventh. And uh, Alex Smith uh, takes ninth. Rob, Rob Whitney will take tenth. And Gus Sporbick eleventh. And Stephen Knight will take twelfth. Excellent job to him for that. So, very exciting race with the guys there. Again, didn't pan out too well for uh, Colin Keneath down in seventh after, well, down to the back of the grid and then having to fight his way all the way back up to seventh position, but a very good job for him for getting where he needs to be. Uh, so let's see if we can look how that affects the points. Okay. I just I just won't touch that. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> trying to do my own, my own calculations for the uh, 
for the uh, for the points there, but unfortunately not uh, not necessarily changing as I was expecting. But anyway, so it looks like we have news of what the reverse grid will be. So the plan, it looks like uh, the random number um, for the first of the two reverse grids of the evening uh, will be the as far back as the fourth position on the grid. So they will be swapped over. So that was um, that daily will now drop into fourth position. Andrew Whitehead third. Uh, Tim Perry and. It was Alan Matthews that was in fourth, so Alan Matthews will now take up the new uh, pole position. So a slightly worse off position than qualifying for um, Andrew Whitehead. Colin Keneath will continue where he was in seventh, so that's a quite a quite a, a bit more work to do to uh, fight his way up the order. As we just wait for the server to reset for the reverse grid of the next race, uh, we will be back in a
so once the screen catches up there we are we are back on the grid for the beginning of race two um it's uh gained a place on the reverse grid so we're currently dealing with a five position reverse grid so greg young has now taken up the mantle of pole position on the grid with uh, Alan Matthews joining him on the front row so your second row is now Tim Perry and Andrew Whitehead Matt Daly and Paul Plant on row three Colin Kniff and James Rose on row f on row four Alex Smith Rob Whitney on row five Guy Swarbrick and Stephen might head up the final row so it'll be very interesting to see what everyone can do from the respective positions so the reverse grid's really throwing in a everyone into the mix a little bit with the points currently that they have scored provisionally it's uh for the touring trophy title it does look like Colin Kniff is currently still in a very good position at the top for the moment but we shall see how the next couple of races play out so it could, we can obviously see that everything does still change at any moment for the drivers with the final few moments now counting down of the race hopefully everyone has worked out their nerves from the first race and uh, prepared for a very clean entry into the first corner on the second race final few moments now until they begin Six likes appear on the gantry. We have four, five, and six lights. The engine notes rise. And they are away. Again, a very good start by the looks of it for the people at the back. Everyone's turning into the first corner. Greg Young looks to be running wide. Everyone's done a... Uh, Gone a little bit wide but got through so far fantastically cleanly uh colin Kniff has uh, improved on his position past paul plant and matt daly matt daly back down into seventh at the moment greg young has managed to hold on to that uh, first position from the beginning of the grid but tim perry is hungry for that position on the outside but he's currently being pushed out by alan matthews so there's a, a few changes happening in the middle now uh paul plant you can see up into fifth matt daly up into seventh now getting past james rose everyone heading down Matt matthews tim perry side by side heading into the breaking zone for turn eight and matthews will have the commanding position turning in but it's a changes after that but Tim Perry falls into place, but has lost out. There's... Oh, no, Matt Daly has had an issue. And again, strikes Rob Whitney. He's trying to get going again. So I'm not sure what happened there, but he was at the back of the pack now. So whether he was pushed to run wide, I'm not too sure. But he is now all the way down at the back of the grid. Same same situation as uh, Colin Kniff was at the beginning of the first race or after a few laps of the first race should i say paul plant has actually managed to get past colin Kniff again up into fifth alex smith is challenging seventh for james rose manages to get past him very cleanly uh as we see alan matthews get past greg greg young beg your pardon going into uh the complex set of corners between uh on the final sector 
So many changes did get me breath back after that. Alan Matthews currently leads now. Um, we currently have, I believe, yellow flag on the on the thing, but I'm not sure what uh, what that what that is trying to portray. Tim Perry now getting past. Um, Greg Young, Matt Daly and Rob Whitney have fighting possession. Matt Daly has now had to actually return to the pits. Why uh, Why? Why is Matt Daly, has he taken damage? I'm not too sure what's happened to him. But uh, Rob Whitney now up in 2.11. There's a spin in the middle. It's a half spin. It's Greg Young. Lost the back of the car by looks of it. It's sort of bouncing around the cars on the inside. There's another car going backwards. That is Andrew Whitehead has been, uh, I think, struck and ended up on the... He's now going to have to rejoin at the back of the pack as well. Again, it can all change at the last moment. Colin can even now up into second position. They're all, again, fighting for, thir for, for third. By the looks of it, Paul Plant is, is currently trying to defend that third position he's been fighting for, uh, trying to keep another five cars at bay. Dear Lord, it's all changed so much in the first... Uh, we haven't even got to the, to the second lap now. Matt Daly is out of the pits now and rejoined the race. Which is good to see that he is uh, continuing. Alex is now past Tim Perry. Alan Matthews is now just storming away up the road. As, as quickly as he can. Colin Keneve. I'm not entirely sure what the uh, what the orange donates next to his name. This is sort of affecting the the, the gantry of the race. But I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, Tim Perry's got past Alex Smith. Very clean manoeuvre coming out of this chicane to turn nine. There's a car off the track at the back. Rob Whitney looks like he uh, ran wide. Uh, at the front we have Alan Matthews now four seconds ahead of Colin Keneve. Colin Keith sliding tail round in the car, trying to get as much speed through the corners as he can. But Paul Plant will be trying to chase him down as hard as he possibly can. Tim Perry now up into a respectable fourth position after the carnage of the first couple of races. Alex Smith currently following him now in fifth. James Rhodes and Greg Young will soon be trying to fight as hard as they can for fifth by looks of it. As they come through the penultimate final corners. Uh, Greg Young uh, trying to put as much pressure as he can on James Rose. Rob Whitney running a bit wide in the last corner in the back of shot. Greg Young uh, there after the seventh guys for what breaking through and a very good eighth position. Alan Matthews in first. But uh, potentially, unbeknownst to our screens, may have picked up a penalty. I don't. I'm not entirely sure. Seems like he's got uh, something is telling him to take action. He has been driving that thing as hard as he can, potentially trying to get as much of a gap as he can from Colin Kanif. Andrew Whitehead now up into tenth position, trying to fight his way up as much as he can we'll see whether Alan has to dive into the pits at the end of this race potentially connection issues there is a bit of a of a slight disconnect uh, with his car by the looks of it Greg Young uh, looks to have got past James Rose in potentially a very looks like a clean maneuver into turn 8 and 9 James Rose trying to come back at him and get the position back. Matt Daly and Steve. Matt Daly now up into 11th. So we'll be on the tail, trying his best to get onto the tail of Andrew Whitehead. Alan Matthews, as you can see now... On the tail end of lap two, leading the race now th nearly three seconds. So Colin Keneef doing his best to bring the gap down. Paul Plant is nearly on the back of Colin's car, actually, as a matter of fact. James Rose gets back past Greg Young. So 
was able to fight for position. Looks like Rob Whitney is going to begin to challenge uh, Guy Swarbrick for eighth. Uh, Matthew's connection, I think, beginning to come back to us a little bit. Three laps in. It is Alan Matthews in first position. Colin Keneef in second. Great result uh, for him in the first two corners of the lap. Again, an issue for Paul Plant. Nearly, nearly tipping the car onto its side. Taking as much as he can as he can, but taking, uh, trying to take the trying to take on the Sotcher Curves in a Giulietta. Nearly ended up in a uh, a very, very bad position for him, but managed to survive that incident and carry on. Tim Perry running on in fourth position. Doing his best to get away from the next group of cars. So everyone is still fairly, fairly close together on the track. One managing to run away too quickly. Guys, Forbrook still up in eighth. Rob Whitney looks like he was trying to challenge for position, but not able to do it. Andrew Whitehead now on the back of uh, Rob's car. Matt Daly again doing his best. There's a couple of changes in the middle of the field. I think people had better runs coming out. I'm not sure what happened to Guys Forbrick. There was a, a potentially an issue with his exit coming up to turn nine. He now has Andrew Whitehead on the back of his car. Andrew Whitehead going for the inside manoeuvre. Very clean, taking two cars in the same braking manoeuvre. Guy Swarbrick nearly not seeing him there and moving into his way. But doing very well to keep out of trouble. Uh, we did have a disconnect from someone as well. Everyone seems to be continuing around. Alan Matthews is still in the lead position of the race with uh, just over a third of the race remaining but the gap is now down to 1.7 seconds to Colin Keneef doing his best to gain as much of the track as he can doing a very very good job at the moment Paul Plant looks like he's not doing again doing his best but not able to get under the rear wing of Colin's car has he learned his lesson and backed off a little bit from this portion of track? He has indeed. Keeps it on the straight and narrow as they find their breaking point. For turns five and six. Tim Perry looks like he will soon be under pressure from Alex Smith. Who looks like he wants to try and go for that fourth position. <clears throat> Greg, Greg Young, James Rose will soon potentially be in the firing line of uh, Andrew Whitehead as well. Trying to do his best to get through the pack. Matt Daly not doing quite so well. Still down in 11th. A fantastic face from Geis. Uh, for Andrew Whitehead to get up into 8th as he is. As Rob Whitney gets past Guy Swarbrick for ninth. Matt Daly behind them looking to try and uh, get a clean manoeuvre past the both of them. But we're just over three laps of the race, three and a half minutes of the uh, race remaining. Can slight disconnect there from Alan's car. That potentially could make it quite tricky for Colin Kniff to get around him if he can't tell where the car is actually going to be, where it should be. He kind of has to predict where Alan's car is going to be. I hope there isn't any surprise news that might cause an issue with. Any disconnect, Andrew Whitehead gets past James Rose. And we'll soon be trying to chase down Greg Young. But 
for the final three minutes. The gap now under a second between Alan Matthews and Colin Caniff. Can Colin go for the lead in the final three laps I believe we have? Breaking into turn seven. Colin is under the rear wing of Matthew's car. Alan running down the curves a little bit. Well, possibly lost a bit of time. Colin trying to grab as much of the slipstream as he can. Not quite close enough to get him on the straight. Both eyeing up their braking points. Looks to the inside. But doesn't do it yet. Keeps on the racing line behind Alan's car. Biding his time for that position. Currently not having to worry about defending from Paul Plan. But Colin looking for the next opportunity to make the move. Goes to the inside for turn eight. Does a very good job. Gets a slow under braking. Can Alan Matthews come back on the undercut? He cannot. Colin Kniff takes the lead. Very clean maneuver from Colin Kniff there under braking into turn eight. Break apart in turn 11. Different part of the circuit, but the fact still remains that he managed to make the manoeuvre done. Alan Matthews now trying his best to get back at him through the complex left and right turns of the final sector, but Paul Plant is now looking to do the same as Colin follow through into second position. Uh, so we will, this will now be the penultimate lap of the race as the clock will count down on the lap that they're on now. And then we'll have one more lap from the leader currently, Colin Kniff. Paul Plant running wide on the run into turn two trying to look for an open door very close to the rear bumper of Alan Matthews car Matt Delacy up into ninth past Rob Whitney down is the braking very close I think Paul Plant's going to try and line up a maneuver coming out of turns ten, uh, turn seven bumps the back of Alan's car can't get it slowed down on the braking enough to make a clean sweep so it will lose time on that one Alex Smith and uh, Tim Perry fighting for fourth position but unfortunately Alex making a slightly uh, slower exit from the hairpin of turn seven so after that bump um, of Paul Plant into the back of Alan's car Tried to, I think, go for the inside line, but wasn't able to get the car slowed down enough. <clears throat> Did make contact and has lost time and uh, on Alan Matthews. So has it all to do? We do still have approximately one and a half laps remaining. So he could potentially close up the gap again and make another manoeuvre. Colin Kniff, though, is running away up the road. Gap now nearly over a second. Matt Daly fighting for his position with Rob Whitney. Rob Whitney actually coming back at him. Has the outside line coming into turn 11. Matt Daly has had to fall into position, but there's contact between the two. That's a that's, that's very. There's contact to and fro between the two there, through and again. Going into the turn 14, and Rob Whitney has actually lost out on that one completely. I'm sure that, again, will be an incident investigated by the stewards. As again, Matt Daly struggles to get the car slowed down behind Gus. Guy Swarbrick and has a little bump with him. One more lap to go as they go over the start finish straight from the leader, Colin Kniff. Matt Daly again up 
past guys for Warbreak and um, hopefully with a big enough gap to uh, Andrew Whitehead will be looking to get away as quickly as possible. Andrew Whitehead now trying to chase down Greg Young has one more lap left to do it. Alex Smith again very very bumpy curves on the inside of the run up to turns, uh, turns five. Looks like Tim may just be doing enough to keep him at bay. As you can see, Paul Plant has lost a massive amount of ground now from Alan Matthews, so he will not be able to close the gap. However, Alan is trying to come back at uh, Colin for the lead. Looks like he has a bit of a run coming into turn eight. Not close enough to take advantage of it as of yet. Doesn't look quite enough to bother Colin, though, in his commanding position of the race. Andrew Whitehead has managed to get past Greg Young, just coming into the breaking zone of turn eight, by the looks of it. Both of our front running cars heavy breaking into turn 11. Another set of chicanes. So the final sector of the lap now between the two. Was Tim Perry close enough to Paul Plant? Not quite, despite uh, Paul's current loss of speed. So, as the leaders come through the final couple of corners, Colin Kenneth will take the win for race two. Well done to Colin, disappointing. I'm sure resolve him in race one, but it made up for that fantastically in race two. As he takes the win, Alan Matthews takes second. Paul Plant will take third. Tim Perry will take fourth. Alex Smith will take fourth. Fifth, Andrew Whitehead will take sixth. Uh, Greg Young will take seventh on the circuit. Matt Daly will come along in uh, eighth. Picking up vital points uh, in his pursuit of the championships. Uh, Ghost Warbrick in a very respectable ninth as is james rose in 10th rob whitney in 11th and stephen knight trailing in 12th position there However, quite an interesting one for the back markers out, the, out there with Matt Daly caught up in a few instants with uh, Rob Whitney trading paint a little bit uh, between the two. Um, Did look at that. <laughs> Trading paint a little bit with a, in a few, I think it was the midsection of the track. Um, but that I'm sure will be an interesting one, whether that affects anything on the, uh, the actual results. Um, who knows as of yet, so there might be some amendments to be made later on during the week. As we just wait for the um, server to be reset for the final race so it'll be a full reverse grid um, they will it will be a full reverse grid beg your pardon so we will have let's just have a look at my little notes for who finished in that order do, 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 do. Need there. So we had Stephen Knight in fourth position. He will be on the front row of the grid. 
uh, next to Rob Whitney. Uh, second row will be James Rose and Guy Swarbrick. Third will be Matt Daly and Greg Young. So for the third race, should serve as an advantage to Matt Daly, um, being ahead of uh, Andrew Whitehead and Alex Smith on row four, I believe. Alex Smith and Tim Perry on row four. No, Tim Perry and Paul Plan on row five. And then the final row being Alan Matthews and Colin Keneef. So, uh, while we wait for that to reset, which it looks like it's... He's doing at the moment. Let's have a look to see if we can keep an eye on what it's doing to... It's good to check your own work just in case you've messed it up, which I had a little bit, but there we are. Fantastic. So, race win and race one for Matt Daly, race win and race two for Colin Kniff. That sets It does seem to upset the order a little bit and provisionally originally it looks like uh Colin Kneef may have uh, a slight advantage going into the third race of the evening As you wait for the server to reset for the final race for the final reverse grid. Mm -hmm. uh, so while we wait for the server is the word again I was looking for uh, we'll be back in just a moment my friends
So, welcome back to the final race of the evening. With just a few minutes remaining of uh, the countdown to the last race, it is a full grid, uh, full reverse grid um, for this evening. So, as I said before, just run through it quickly. We have Stephen Knight and Rob Winnie in row one. Uh, we oh, does look like we're actually missing. Someone from the second row there. Uh, who are we missing? It looks like we're missing. Uh, it looks like we're missing Alex Smith. I think from uh, from row two. Uh, so only a couple of minutes left. Um, Until the beginning of the race, uh, but we shall. This is the guy Swarbrick in uh, third position, row two. Row three is Matt Daly and Greg Young. Row four is Andrew Whitehead and Alex Smith. Tim Perry and Paul Plant uh, on the penultimate row, and Alan Matthews and Colin Kenefar race winner of race two at the back of the pack. <laughs> So oh, just under a minute left. It's probably coming through the microphone, isn't it? <laughs> but there we are. Um, so we still have one driver remaining for the uh, for the race, but as we count down to find a few seconds. Results of race two have uh, shaken up the championship standings quite a lot with uh, Matt Daly finishing quite far down the order, which was not the plan at all um, for his evening. But we still have one. We still have one race remaining for this evening. As the uh, countdown approaches the start of the race. The lights appear on the gantry. Everyone ready to go. Three, four, five, and six lights. Turn red. They go out and away they go. A fantastic start from Matt Daly. Everyone getting a good start. Let's see what happens to everyone in the first corner. Everyone getting through very cleanly. A few people running a little bit wide. But they all get through in very good order. Matt Daly now up into third, but is being challenged from the three wide going through the chicanes. There's people moving about, changing the order. As we see Rob Whitney falling down the order is due to his uh, lack of momentum through the chicane. Matt Daly covering up to third, but under pressure from Guy Swarbrick, but manages to hold out. Guys, Warbeck on the outside of turn seven. Now under pressure from Andrew Whitehead as well. There again, three wide heading down the main straightaway. Stephen Knight doing a fantastic job in first place. Matt Daly coming into second, but under immense pressure from Greg Young trying to get around the outside. Nearly three wide as it looks a bit far into the braking zone. Matt Daly does a good job of getting the car slowed down. Greg Young runs a bit wide. This car's running wide. Guy Sprawlbrick again, but managing to get round as needed. Paul Plant there in fifth. Stephen Knight currently still in the lead. Again, there's three wide heading down into turn 11. A lot of pressure on Guy Swarbrick's shoulders, uh, beg your pardon, Stephen Knight's shoulders as people running wide as they're into turn, uh, turn 11, but they all managed to get going again. Paul Plant is trying to challenge for the lead. Uh, is happening. Matt Daly does get past Stephen Knight, Greg Young as well, and Stephen Knight, after a fantastic effort from him, uh, begins to fall back. 
uh, through the pack a little bit. Doesn't quite have the pace of the other driver, so it's an instant and uh, look like Andrew Whitehead was stationary in the middle of the road, gets struck um, by the similar livery car of Tim Perry by the looks of it. Very, very strange incident, so I'm not sure what happened there. The, the final section of the course is very, very tight and twisty. So it looks like perhaps Andrew's rear was tagged by another driver. Um, but a very, very strange instant now. And that now means that Andrew Whitehead is back in 10th position. As we've seen, he shows great pace in trying to fight his way back up the field. And they're all still fairly bunched up together. So it shouldn't be too hard for him to do what he needs to do. At the front of the pack, Matt Daly is now running away up the road with a slight amount of pressure from... Oh dear, Alex Smith is stationary and just about gets going. So again, not sure what happened to his car. We have another stationary car, but looks like, who was that? Uh, we are looking at Tim Perry, who has uh, retired to the pits. Um, looks like he may continue once the car has been repaired. Uh, nope, he has actually decided to call it a night for this evening, which is a great shame from him. Uh, but that leaves Alex Smith now with damage on the car in final place. Again, they're all still very competitive, all still fighting for the position. Colin Kniff up into sixth with pressure from Andrew Whitehead on the back of him now. So this will be a very interesting battle between those two uh, for position as they are the top two that uh, will be fighting, potentially fighting for a seat um, in the Alfa Romeo Championship Association next year. So after I think we're coming up to the end of lap two now, the first of the race is played out. Matt Daly is in first position. Greg Young currently now nearly two seconds behind him, doing his best to fight on as much as he can. Colin Kniff now getting past Stephen Knight. Fortunately, Stephen Knight has been hit by uh alan matthews a very unfortunate incident for him a fantastic effort from stephen knight leading the race as long as he did doesn't deserve any sort of uh penalty for instance with uh with contact from i think Alec was andrew white is actually all the way up into fourth place now um ahead of colin keneef now but colin keneef is right on his tail Holly, Andrew running a little bit wide there by the looks of it through turns, uh, coming up through turns two now. Stephen Knight now at the back of the pack after that instant with, looks like Alan Matthews I think was the was the car he had in his dip with, but we didn't see the beginning of uh, what that was, or what happened with that instant. Back at the front of the grid, Matt Daly is currently leading now two, over two and a half seconds in front of Greg Young, just going down the straight. Paul Plant currently in fifth, Andrew Whitehead in fourth, doing his best to catch up and also get away from Colin Kniff as much as he can. Colin Kniff is in the slipstream of Andrew's car heading into turn eight, but not close enough to make any challenge as of yet. Guys, Warwick up into sixth position. Behind him, Alan Matthews just running rather wide at uh, turn nine. So we'll be under pressure from Rob Whitney. Alex Smith behind him in ninth place. Rob Whitney looks to be getting him under breaking and does indeed. Can Alan Matthews come back on the switch back? He's trying his best, trying to get the run out of the corners. Not able to do it as of yet. But looking for any open door opportunity he can. Looks like they may be held up slightly by Guys Warbrick's car trying to defend. 
as they head through the complex set of corners through there's contact with Rob Whitney and Alan Matthews looks like Alan was uh, just tagged the back of uh, Whitney's car sort of sent him offline a little bit but they're able to continue and Alan Matthews putting immense pressure on Rob Whitney and Rob Whitney doing a fantastic job defending his position two cars battling on as they go to start uh, the potential corner beg your pardon for start finish straight uh, who was that Alex Smith going very wide uh, running completely off the track uh, and the, just after turn 20 so I think that damage causing the car to be rather undrivable as he does return as he does go into the pits to try and uh, get that uh, repaired the steering sort of slightly all over the place for, uh, for his car at the front of the row again midway through lap three Matt Daly is leading the pack and ever increasing the gap <coughs> to Greg Young nearly four seconds now to Greg Young Paul Plant down in third trying to catch up to the two front running cars Andrew Whitehead still managing to defend his position from Colin Keneath but not getting away as I say that slightly stutters under the braking but I think so does Colin Keneath so uh, due to the camera angle we didn't really get to see what happened there I think Colin may have uh, possibly taken avoiding action of uh, Andrew's car potentially but I didn't get to see what that was great shame but uh, Colin has now actually lost a lot of ground on uh, Andrew's car so has it all to do again to catch up battle for sixth position between Guy Swarbrick Andrew uh, beg your pardon Guy Swarbrick and Alan Matthews as he gets him under the braking very late maneuver there by Alan Matthews into uh, turn 11 but gets the job done beautifully <clears throat> as it looks like there's an incident with Guy Swarbrick he's struggled to get the car slowed down under braking very lucky not to hit Alan Matthews car just uh I don't know what that was whether there was connection issue or um the back of the car looked like it was uh, overtaking the front a little bit but um whatever that was didn't make contact with uh, Alan Matthews car did uh, and managed to get through the corner successfully slightly limited on camera angles unfortunately with this uh, particular circuit so kind of restricted to what um, you can see with the, what the cars are doing Stephen Knight down in ninth place and Alex Smith has returned to the circuit after having his car repaired and is down in to 10th position and Tim Perry being the only person to have retired just under a third of the race to go Matt Daly tiptoeing through the chicane at turn 9 <clears throat> doing a very good job to get as much distance as he can from him to Greg Young in second place Greg Young doing a very good job with his the position he has Paul Plant pushing as much as he can again you can see the rear wheels locking up on Paul Plant's car and unfortunately that will cost him time over uh, Greg Young So as much as he managed to gain on the on Greg Young, unfortunately, now has been lost due to that uh, running wide. That uh, turn eleven, I believe it was. Andrew Whitehead down into fourth, still a fairly decent point scoring position for him, and crucially is ahead of Colin Keneath, who is back down, who is in fifth. 
Alan Matthews in six, putting a decent amount of space from him to Rob Whitney, who has managed to get in front of Guy Swarbrick. Stephen Knight doing a funny job in ninth, and Alex Smith back in tenth. So we will follow the leader for the moment, as I'm sure the rest of the drivers are doing. Colin Kniff putting in the best time, so is Alan Matthews. Uh, the gap looks to be roughly three, four seconds between Alan, between uh, Andrew Whitehead and Colin Kniff. So we'll see if uh, Colin can bring that down at all. section of Guy Swarbrick who is actually stationary on the circuit as well which is great shame and has decided to retire to the pits as well very very great shame to see him in that position as we see Alex Smith sliding around the corner I think just uh, hooking a wheel onto the curb um, not managing to get round Matt Daly currently in the lead with Greg Young in second and gap now uh, an immense eight seconds between the two and again Paul Plant uh, the gap between Andrew Whitehead and Paul Plant is shrinking by by the corner looks like uh, unless something disastrous happens with the con with uh, the the two front cars meeting Colin Kniff uh, just maintaining the gap being maintained from Colin Kniff to Andrew Whitehead as free guy Swarbrick returned to the circuit through the sort of the underground tunnel and rejoins uh, just after Alec Smith. Uh, against, well, no, joins, joins behind him on the circuit, but it looks like Alex might potentially be a lap down. There is a change for third position as Andrew Whitehead now closed the gap rapidly. He managed to get, as we see, the, the thing change. And actually, Alex Smith is ahead of Guy Swarbrick. Uh, Andrew Whitehead is up into third ahead of Paul Plant. So Paul Plant not able to keep Andrew at bay. The gap closed incredibly rapidly. And the final podium position is now... Andrew Whitehead's Guy Swarbrick managing to get up past Alex Smith after exiting the pits, but that does not affect where Andrew Whitehead is. There is an immense battle going on at the back of the pack between Alex Smith and Guy Swarbrick. Guy being on the slightly fresher tyres of the two cars tries to get down and the braking does so very well. Alex trying to get back at him on the switchback. Not quite able to do it. The gap between Paul Plant and Andrew Whitehead just being maintained. Andrew running slightly wide over the curbs. That means Paul Plant will be in slipstream for the second longest straight to the circuit, trying to run to the outside. Under braking of turn 11, Andrew's car does have damage. But he is able to defend from Paul Plan. I think Andrew may have caught Paul napping slightly when he got past him. Now Paul decided to wake up and try and fight back for that position. Colin Kniff will be hoping that they squab a little bit more, allowing him to get a bit closer, I presume. The gap between Matt Daly and Greg Young now 10 seconds, and the gap between Andrew Whitehead and Greg Young looks to be about 6 or 7 seconds now. Uh, as we see Matt Daly come across the start-finish line to begin the final lap of the third race of the evening. He will soon look to be coming up on the back of uh, Guy Swarbrick and Alex Smith, actually battling for ninth. Still hotly battling for ninth. Fantastic to see them uh, 
fighting away there, but uh, let's just hope they're able to move out the way of Matt Daly. Uh, looks like Andrew Whitehead just started to eke out to gap over Paul Plant. Colin Keneef not able to make a maneuver on Paul Plant as of yet. Just follow the two back markers for the moment. You can see Matt Daly getting very close at the moment. Paul Plant's actually managed to get past Andrew Whitehead, and so does Colin Keneef. My word, I'm not, not entirely sure what happened there. Maybe I think Andrew Whitehead may, may have run a little bit wide. I don't think uh, potentially there was contact, but he lost a massive amount of speed. Guy Swarbrick gets pa back past Alex Smith, who again does the same thing. He's getting still fighting wave position, but uh, Matt Daly getting ever closer. There are so many points of the circuit to look at. <laughs> but uh, on the final lap, the entire order... The order changed dramatically there. Paul Plant has got back his final position on the uh, podium there. Uh, Matt Daly is just moments behind catching up to the back runner of Guy Swarbrick. Greg Young, fantastic, respectable results in second position there, keeping Mosley out of trouble. Andrew Whitehead now on the back of Colin Keneve's car, trying uh, to uh, essentially damage control now. There are not many laps left. I think uh, Matt Daly is on the back of Guy Swarbrick's car now on the final sector. There are not many turns left, and this is the final turn they're coming up to now. Alex Smith diving out the way of our leader coming through. Uh, there is actually again change in the middle of contact between Andrew Whitehead and Paul Plant just to dip away from our leader taking the uh, the race win. We saw changes happening in the middle. Colin Keneath now up into third position. Didn't get to see the the what happened there roughly, but we saw the result of that being uh, Greg Young not to take away the result from him in second place. My word, everything changing in the final corners. And Colin Keneath taking third, Paul Plant at fourth. Andrew Whitehead in fifth. My boy, everything changed in the final few corners. Alan Matthews in sixth. Rob Whitney taking. Uh, do, 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 do. Rob Whitney taking seventh now. Uh, so Colin. Oops. Going in there, there's there. A massive amount of orders changing there. Uh, Stephen Knight just coming across the line now in a valiant fifth, uh, eighth position there. Beg your pardon. And obviously we have our final two positions by the looks of it. Although rather strangely, it seems to suggest Guy Swarbrick is still running, but I'm not entirely sure how to... Oh no, of course it would have been because Guy Swarbrick was in front of Matt Daly as he came across the line. So of course he has another entire lap to run. Um, whereas Alex Smith finished after him. Slightly rather strange, but congratulations to goes to Matt Daly for his <clears throat> uh, race win in race three. Thanks, he celebratory swerves and then into the barrier. That's the beauty of sim racing: is you can you can you can kind of let off, <laughs> let off steam. Now play around with the cars a little bit. Uh, Let's just have a little look at the standings. So, after an incredible amount of... Uh, I think I swap because actually finishes we...
think it still says final lap, unfortunately, as Tim Perry is still technically running, even though he hasn't actually finished. But we do have our race winner there of uh, Matt Daly. Uh, so. <laughs> Did take a breath after that one. Good Lord. Everything happening very, very quickly in the final few corners. Almost too much to keep up with. Um, but let me just... Try and uh, just make sure that I have my very rough calculations correct. Do, 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 that one. So, yes. Yes, and yes. So, as it is... I don't believe anyone has a overall position that's enough to secure a championship win i believe i could be wrong i have been before <laughs> many times <laughs> no so the gaps between our top three positions And not enough to secure because with 25 points on offer for a race win and one race remaining in the championship i believe it is down to the final round let's just see do, 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 do. So the order has changed a little bit, I think. So who was? Barring any amendments from... Because the drivers still have an opportunity to challenge for stewards' inquiries and stuff in certain incidents. Um, the Turing result... Looks like it may... Yeah, because I'm not it. So, currently, for the uh, Turing Championship result, we uh, we have Colin Kniff leading that championship, but doesn't have a big enough margin to secure the win. And then the overall scores as well for the overall championship are looks like currently to be leaded by Matt Daly. Um, but he is again not clear enough to secure a result. So it looks to me like it is down going to down to the final round, which will be held at uh, Watkins Glen and is an endurance round, so I believe barring any changes during uh during the week will be um an hour-long race at Watkins Glen in uh I think it's the 4C race cars um but of course that will be clarified at the beginning of the next stream so incredible racing again everything changed all the way down into the th to the final race and the final few corners instance between a lot of people I'm sure the stewards will have their work cut out now trying to uh, trying to amend what's going on. Um, any mistakes that I've made, like, these are provisional results. They do need to be finalised. Um, and then hopefully we should have a more complete result for you um, next week. Uh, but as far as I can see, um, it's, it's still open. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we don't, I believe... No, that's fine. We do not. Everyone's a 
a bit too tired after that so we don't have any drivers for driver interviews but that's not a problem so we will end the broadcast there thank you very much for everyone for joining um as i said we'll be walking to glenn next week next thursday um and uh yeah i hope you can join me for that and uh yeah we should see you all again soon and i hope you have a lovely weekend a lovely weekend nearly christmas yay <laughs>